Across the world, 151,600 people die each day. And whilst our planet is overpopulated with a whopping 7.7 .7 billion people, it does not make the idea of our mortality any less terrifying to think about. For many of us, we are likely comforted by the fact that when we die, we'll be missed. Our legacy, however small it may seem, will be passed on amongst those whom we love and those who love us. But this isn't the case for everybody. In fact, many people go unidentified, with no one to miss them, mourn them, or even report them missing. And sometimes, bodies remain unidentified due to a lack of discernible facial features, a pair of missing fingertips, or sometimes, even an unfound head. In today's video, we'll be looking at three unsolved Jane Doe cases that feature severed heads. San Bernardino Jane Doe Found in February of 2010 by a man collecting cans to turn into the local recycling centre for cash, the San Bernardino Jane Doe has been nameless for almost a decade. Jane Doe's severed head was found in a backpack on a desert road in Barstow and it was wrapped inside several plastic bags, one from Fiesta Foods and the other from Walgreens. Due to Jane's lack of a body, which has not been recovered even today. No cause of death could be determined, as her head did not seem to have endured any trauma that would indicate how she was murdered. Estimated to be between 14 and 19 years old, Jane Doe is described as a Hispanic female with brown eyes and brown straight hair with red highlights. She has pierced ears, but no jewelry was found in them. There are no distinguishable tattoos, marks or scars on her face or anywhere else on her head. She did have good dental care, implying she had previously been taken care of. This would lead many to speculate that someone out there is missing her, and perhaps the right person just hasn't stumbled across the facial reconstruction. It seems that Jane Doe's demise had occurred just days prior, approximately three to four days before she was found. Investigators worked desperately for leads, but unfortunately, with such little information available, it's difficult to determine more than Jane's physical appearance, and even then, authorities claim that the facial reconstruction could be unreliable, as her face was destroyed. Police believe it was intentionally mutilated. Without an identity, Jane's case will likely remain unsolved. Forensics attempted to lift any prints available on the three bags, but none could be found, suggesting that Jane had been murdered by someone who perhaps wore gloves and was very careful upon carrying out the crime. The state of the incisions made to Jane's neck is unknown to the public, so it's never been determined if the cut was made by someone with experience or by an amateur. Online sleuths wonder if Jane Doe fell victim to an unknown serial killer in the area and have also proposed that she could be Anna Rayner or Erin Rogers. Anna Rayner went missing from Dallas, Texas on August the 29th, 2008. She was born on February the 6th, 1991, meaning if she was Jane Doe, she'd have been 19 at the time of the murder, which fits into Doe's suspected age range. Anna is Hispanic with brown hair and brown eyes. Although her weight and height are listed on the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, it cannot be compared to Jane Doe's as her body has never been recovered. Erin Rogers went missing on January the 8th, 2007, from Modesto, California. She was born February the 11th, 1992, which again would put her in Jane Doe's estimated age range at 18 years old. Also a Hispanic woman, she is described as having brown eyes and black hair. Reportedly, Erin was last seen in the company of an adult female, who appears to be unidentified. Some distinguishing marks on Erin's body include a scar on her lower back, a scar on her forehead, and a mark above the right side of her upper lip. It's unknown if Jane Doe shares any of these marks, 
as they are not listed on her NC MEC page, but it could be that they were destroyed or changed during the mutilation of her face. Although there has been no progress made on Jane Doe's identity, several other possibilities have been ruled out. Sarita Camacho, a 15-year-old girl who went missing from San Diego, California in 2008. Jessica Foster, a 21-year-old who went missing from Las Vegas, Nevada in 2006. And Kelsey Collins, an 18-year-old who went missing from Everett, Washington in 2009. Hopefully, one day the right person will see Jane's face online and recognise it as a missing friend or family member. Without an ID, it seems unlikely that Jane Doe will ever receive the justice she deserves. Beaver County Jane Doe One of the most infamous cases of this kind is that of the Beaver County Jane Doe, sometimes called the Pennsylvania Jane Doe. Her head was found by a teenager out walking through a wooded area on December 12, 2014, and the case is extremely peculiar. Jane Doe's head was removed precisely and expertly by someone who had anatomical knowledge. Her eyes had been replaced with rubber balls, inconsistent with those used in the funeral industry. Having said that, Jane had been embalmed in a manner that was more consistent with a funeral home than a medical school. It is widely speculated that she was decapitated by a so-called body broker, someone who sells body parts from a cadaver donated to science. An anatomy professor is quoted as saying, she was dismembered professionally, it's part of the body parts trade. The body broker trade has been linked to similar instances of abuse in the past. In 2015, a cadaver lying at the side of the road discovered by Texas police had fallen from a van en route to a body broker, and the van driver had not even noticed. This particular theory, believed by online sleuths, is that Jane's head was accidentally dropped in transit. However, Economy Borough Police Chief Michael O'Brien said in 2015 that he believed the head did not roll off the back of a truck, as it was found too far off rural Mason Road to have ended up there accidentally. Due to the embalming fluid used on the body, it seems unlikely that animals would have carried the head either, as they would have been put off by the substance. The police chief believes that the head is linked to the black market for organs. Returning to the unsettling clue of Jane Doe's eyes, it was found that eye caps, used by morticians to keep the eyelids closed, were used, but that a small rubber ball filled each of her sockets. Reportedly, no funeral home directors or medical examiners could say that they had ever used such a thing to replace the eyes. However, one company which made spheres, which also work as eye caps, was tracked down, but their products were completely different in colour and texture to those found with Jane's body. It was once speculated that perhaps an eye bank or organ procurement agency had taken her eyes, but this was quickly dismissed as, in fact, only the corneas would have been removed if this was the case. On the other hand, a body broker may take and sell the entire eyeball. One of the most discerning features of Jane Doe is her dental work, which is described as patchwork dentistry, where problems are addressed only when absolutely necessary. It was determined that she'd had work done on every single tooth, with one being worked on as much as seven times. Her unique dentistry seems to be the only real clue that could lead to a breakthrough in the case, but so far, it has not led to her identity being revealed. Isotope testing showed that Jane Doe had not lived in Beaver County in the months before her death, but had lived in the same region she was found at one point in her life. She was also believed to have lived in the surrounding states, including West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, Eastern New York, and Western Maryland. Police theorise that Jane Doe may have been living with or in the care of various friends and family, which is why she seemed to have lived in so many places. As far as Jane Doe's appearance, there is very little to go on. She is described as being over 50, and her hair is said to be grey and fluffy. Toxicology tests show that Jane Doe had traces of lidocaine and atropine in her system, indicating she may have died of some sort of heart failure. While police are investigating the case, they do not suspect foul play. However, they are keen to identify her and notify her family. 
St. Louis Jane Doe. Perhaps one of the most horrific cases of an unidentified decapitation is that of the St. Louis Jane Doe, also referred to as Hope. On February the 28th, 1983, two men who entered an abandoned Victorian home on Clemens Avenue made the gruesome discovery of the young girl when one of them lit up a cigarette and illuminated the grisly scene. The child, an African-American estimated to be between 8 and 11 years of age, was located in the basement of the house and was at first believed by authorities to be a prostitute. That was until they turned her over and found that she had not even reached puberty. The child was naked except for a yellow sweater and she was lying on her stomach with her hands bound behind her back by red and white nylon rope. She had been sexually assaulted and decapitated and it was believed that her cause of death was strangulation. As there was no blood found at the scene, investigators quickly determined that she'd been killed elsewhere and dumped in the abandoned building. The murderer likely thought that no one would enter the home and probably didn't consider that looters would have an interest in the old building. Mole tests performed on the body showed that Jane Doe had been killed within five days of discovery and it was found out through the autopsy that she had an empty stomach at the time of her death. Jane Doe's head has never been recovered and was severed cleanly, likely by a large blade like a carving knife. At the time of her death, Jane Doe was wearing two coats of red fingernail polish and her fingerprints, footprints and DNA were collected. Jane also had spina bifida occulta, a condition that occurs when the baby's backbone doesn't fully form during pregnancy. This would lead to Jane being born with small gaps in the bones of her spine. However, Spina bifida occulta is relatively common and generally causes no health issues. Jane would have displayed no outward symptoms. It was estimated that she would have stood around 4 foot 10 to 5 foot 6 when she was alive and would weigh between 70 and 80 pounds. One of law enforcement's only clues in the case of the St. Louis Jane Doe was her yellow sweater. Police sent the evidence off to a psychic in Florida so that she could touch it to receive a psychic impression. However, it seems to have got lost in the post as the jumper was never returned to authorities. It's unknown why it was not at least personally delivered and returned as it seems obvious that losing it could be a possibility. In 2013, Jane Doe's body was exhumed for forensics. Initially, the remains could not be located and seemed to have been misplaced partly due to the severe negligence of cemetery records. The body was found in mid-June by use of camera calibration techniques, which determined where the photo of her casket had been taken on the day of her burial at Washington Park Cemetery in December 1983. The results of the forensics, which included isotope testing, showed that Jane Doe was likely to have lived in any one of the following states. Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, and North or South Carolina. However, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children contradicts this, stating that Jane Doe would have hailed from Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Indiana, or West Virginia. It's uncertain which website has the correct information, but many sites list the former group of states and this list is the most common answer. The only suspect ever named in the case of the St. Louis Jane Doe was a man named Vernon Brown, who'd murdered young girls in a similar fashion. He was an active killer in Missouri and Indiana in the early to mid-1980s, and was charged with the murder of a nine-year-old named Janet Perkins, whom he sexually assaulted, strangled, and dismembered. While there are some similarities between the cases of Janet and Jane, Janet's case seems much less premeditated and a lot more haphazard. Jane Doe's head had been severed cleanly, she'd been well hidden, and her head had never been recovered. However, Janet's body was recovered in its entirety and had been disposed of in bin bags in an alley near to Vernon Brown's home. Her body had been cut into pieces in an apparently crude fashion, although it's unknown what instrument was used. Vernon Brown was executed in 2005, and he did not confess to the murder of the St. Louis Jane Doe. Her case goes unsolved, 
and her identity and that of her killer remain unknown. So that's three unsolved Jane Doe cases that feature severed heads. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.